The yellow Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Well, you guessed it. Here to do another video. Talking about some Pluto. All my Pluto people, come on in. Have you heard? Pluto's in Aquarius. In this video series, I talk about Pluto and Aquarius aspecting each planet in the zodiac. We talk about the evolutionary intent of transiting Pluto aspecting the planets in your birth chart. We're going to get a little emotional because we're talking about the moon. I apologize. Getting over a little bit of cold. So I hope I don't do too much Donald Duck talking. Hope you can kind of hear the wisdom through the quacking. All right. For all you new people, please click like and subscribe. It so helps me promote my channel. In the description below, you're going to see a link to get a reading. I have this special Pluto and Aquarius reading. It's a 45-minute reading. It's kind of set up to be super affordable and set up to help you get through this transit because Pluto's your friend. It's here to help you. All right. Without any further ado, let's talk us about some Pluto in Aquarius aspecting your moon. So you find yourself as a soul incarnated into a body with the planet Pluto in Aquarius aspecting your moon. How emotionally special are you? All right, my Pluto people, we're going to dive in because Pluto and the moon are best friends. You know, Pluto kind of wants to be real. The emotions kind of want to be real. You know, Pluto kind of wants to see through, through things. The emotions sometimes can see through things and sometimes can keep you stuck looping around. So my friend Pluto and Aquarius, your friend Pluto and Aquarius, our friend Pluto and Aquarius, aspect in your moon. So we're talking the conjunction moon and Aquarius, the opposition moon and Leo, and the two squares of moon and Scorpio and moon and Taurus. So fundamentally the moon is how you interact how you feel, and how you interact with emotions. So, generally speaking, you got to remember as a soul, you incarnate into this birth chart to teach you the lessons. So, if you have a moon in Aquarius, you're here to learn about emotional res responses from an Aquarian perspective. Same with Leo, same with Scorpio, same with Taurus. So, remembering that, it's important that you're here to learn this. And any time you're here to learn something, it means you're kind of getting better at it as we speak. So when you first start out in life, you're not as good as the end of life, hopefully. And so understanding this, you know, there's a couple things you want to look at. Look to whatever you have in Cancer. Look to whatever you have in the fourth house. Look to your natal Pluto. And look to any other things you might have aspecting your moon besides the transiting Pluto, like if you have any other aspects in the natal chart. All this will help you understand what this Pluto transits here to help you with, help to unlock those emotions. So Pluto and Aquarius, Moon and Aquarius. Moon and Aquarius is kind of an interesting position, as in Aquarius is kind of detachment and Moon is fundamentally attached and so from an evolutionary perspective you're learning how to kind of step back from the emotions not be so emotionally triggered and there's a fundamental reason because whenever you're looking at Aquarius you're looking at the trauma from karmic wounds very likely and so to get over some of these wounds you have to kind of step back and not be so emotional so on some levels, that Aquarian moon wants to not be emotional. But the moon in general wants to be emotional. And this is where I'm going to sound like I'm doing a little Gemini double talk out of both sides of my mouth. I don't mean to be, because this is a kind of a complex placement, so it requires some nuance. And so knowing where you need to be emotionally attached and where you need to be emotionally removed is a big part of understanding this transit. Because the easy way to do this moon is just kind of like not be attached to anyone. But that doesn't necessarily always work. 
depending on whether or not you have a bunch of stuff in the seventh A's or any other relationship oriented, you know, if you have um, Pluto and Venus, or I mean Pluto and Libra, or any other thing in Libra or um, Scorpio, those relationship signs means your soul here to learn relationship lessons. And so that Pluto and Aquarius is going to light up that moon, kind of like, you know, want you to let go of some of these old stories. Because so often with Aquarius, we're talking about the mental stories that no longer serve you. That's what this Pluto and Aquarius is trying to liberate you from. And, you know, if you're finding yourself super detached from everyone, that Pluto and Aquarius is going to want to kind of light up the stories that are telling you that no one gets you. Because it's not that no one gets you. It's just that most people don't get you. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because most people don't get you doesn't mean there's not people that can get you. Not people that you can open up and trust. Not get so caught up with the people who don't. You know, use that some of that Aquarian detachment to kind of not be so emotionally involved with everyone. Now, if we run over to the other side of the Zodiac, we talk a little Leo moon. Well, Leo fundamentally needs to be seen. And if you have moon in Leo, it means you're fundamentally learning how to be emotionally seen. Well, from a karmic perspective, a soul might need to learn how to be emotionally seen, regain trust if trauma happened. You know, because one thing about the moon, you know, one thing about the heart, opening up the heart, because the, the moon and the heart kind of go hand in hand, you know, is the vulnerability there. You know, it's like for someone to really hurt you, you have to open your heart up to them. You know, if it's a stranger, they can't hurt you nearly as well as someone you opened your heart up to. So with that moon in Leo, it's requiring you, wanting you to kind of find that emotional wisdom through sharing it with other people, being seen. Requires the right audience, requires the trust, you know. And also with, with all of moon aspects, all of moon stuff in your birth chart, especially for us Pluto people. There's so much emotional wisdom that comes through the moon. It is where all the true divine wisdom comes through. Your feelings. And so with moon and Leo, you need other people to kind of help you see that. Help you find the profoundness in your emotions. And then going over to the Pluto and Scorpio, hitting one of the squares. Scorpio fundamentally wants the truth. Scorpio's a water sign. The moon's a water planet. So we got to you know, Pluto in Aquarius, air with that water planet, that water sign, doing a little dance there. So fundamentally, where are you being too intense? Where are you not being too intense? Where are you listening to those stories of the childhood wounding that are keeping you closed down? Where are you sharing that intensity with the wrong people? Because a lot of times with Scorpio, especially as a child, Sharing that intensity with the wrong people will tend to shut you down, get you all closed down. And then it's about learning who to share with and who not to share with and getting over the addiction because Scorpio can kind of be a little taskmaster in wanting honesty and truth, emotional honesty and truth, you know. Now, but fundamentally, you got to remember the moon is there to take care of you, nurture you. And the, Wanting emotional honesty and truth and wanting to take care of yourself isn't always go hand in hand. Where do you run from emotional honesty and where do you run towards emotional honesty? And how well does it take care of you? Because remember that Pluto and Aquarius is ruled by that Uranus and Taurus. And this is the case for all of these moons. You know, Uranus and Taurus fundamentally wants you to calm down, wants you to uniquely express yourself but in a way that's good and calming for you and so on a lot of levels that's what this transits to into that pluto or excuse me that scorpio moon wanting you to kind of still keep your intensity but do it in such a way that's good for you not light people up just for the sake of lighting them up because a lot of times when there's a big wound anytime pluto comes up it's going to light up the wounds 
And the Scorpio wound is really sharing with the wrong people. And so a lot of times you'll get caught up with, you know, this addiction to kind of not sharing, but sharing. Because if someone gets you, you can't really truly share with them. To truly share with someone requires them to be able to really get you. So if you're sharing with people that don't get you, it's safer than sharing with people who do get you. Because when you open up that Scorpio moon, the vulnerability there is pretty intense. All right, let's run across the Zodiac to Taurus, that Taurus moon. Fundamentally, Taurus wants to calm down, wants to feel safe, be safe, stable, stability. Now, as in Scorpio, being a little too unstable, Taurus can be a little too stable. You know, are you, so to speak, not shaking the apple cart? Or let me say this another way. Are you so emotionally stable that you're not living? You're kind of stunting your life, not going for what you want. So to be, so to speak, being stuck in that comfort zone. Well, Pluto and Aquarius is going to light that up. Like, hey, you Taurus moon, let's come out and have a little excitement. Ready for a little excitement? Now, again, it's going to sound like I'm doing a little Gemini talking out both sides of my mouth. That calm stability and that excitement. You know, they, they don't have to have a divorce, so to speak. They can work hand in hand. Can you have excitement and still maintain your calm stability? Well, if anyone can do it, those Taurus moon can do it. With my friend Pluto and Aquarius, lighten that up. Kind of, hey. So, with all Pluto transits, there's the possibility for them being tough, but it doesn't mean they have to be tough. Pluto does not want to be your enemy. Pluto wants to be your friend. It's the ego that makes it tough, the unwilling to let go of those old stories that no longer serve you, because Pluto and Aquarius is coming hunting for those. All those mental stories that you tell yourself that no longer serve you, keep you stuck. Keep that emotional wisdom that's available through your moon stuck. Because on some levels, that's what Pluto's here to liberate, is all that emotional wisdom. You know, are you caught up in the stories? You know, on my YouTube channel, there's a playlist. And on one of the playlists is the Heart Wisdom Podcast. It's not really astrology, but... For all you moon folks, it would be a great playlist for you to listen to. Because it really talks about letting go of the stories and getting into the emotional wisdom behind the stories, in the emotions. Breathing into the emotions and not into the stories. And that's what Pluto and Aquarius is going to do for all these moon signs. Pretty much everyone's moon. Because my friend Pluto, it doesn't need to square or aspect to light up a planet it just lights it up all right i hope you like this video and please have a spectacular day